learners i welcome you all in yet another video lesson of dlet program of nios we are going to discuss about unit 1 of course code 504 and our today's topic is the ways a child thinks stages of cognitive development before moving on the main topic i will discuss with you that how this lesson will flow first of all i will discuss with you the lesson guide then the expectations in terms of learning objective then i will introduce the today's concept then we are moving on the theory of cognitive development proposed by jean piaget then we are going to discuss the foundation of piagetian theory of cognitive development as well its assumptions along with it we will also discuss the stages proposed by jean piaget of cognitive development at the end of the lesson we will recapitulate and there is a take home task so first of all i would share with you the lesson guide during the presentation i will explain the different concepts you need to attend to my voice and the slides as well you will find important words sentences have been highlighted for your retention i have also put summary at the end for your retention there are some questions or exercises in between and at the end of my presentation you must attempt these questions or exercises after going through this video lesson here are the learning objectives or the learning outcomes or the learning expectations from you after going through this lesson you would be able to understand how children think you would be able to identify different stages of cognitive development as proposed by jean piaget you will also be able to draw implication of the theory of cognitive development for children's learning of different subjects mainly in mathematics now friends here is an visual on your screen i would ask what it is i think the answers for this visual would be different for us some of us may be after looking at this visual may find that this is a picture of an old lady or some of us may be find that it's in picture of a young girl obviously our responses for this visual are different now the question come that why our response is different for this visual i think it is due to differences in observation experiences and interaction with the objects in the environment which makes us looking at this world differently think differently and learn differently therefore it is implied that for understanding of learning it is required to understand the thinking there are different notions which are popular about how children think the first notion is mind is a clean slate to write upon it's a very popular notion it is also be understood as mind is totally dark and illuminated by knowledge about child thinking we also look at the children as a soft lump of clay which can be given any shape as desire now i would ask to you that do these statements sufficiently or appropriately describes how children think obviously not and the answers are provided by cognitive psychology brain research and neurological research social and cultural psychology thinking is not that easy process it is a complex process and in today's class we are going to discuss about the cognitive psychology and in it the most prominent psychologist jean piaget who have offer a stage specific theory of cognitive development in his theory of cognitive development jean piaget studied how cognitive development over the stages that is over the span of chronological age takes place before moving on the theory let me first discuss with you the basic concept of the theory piaget proposed that thinking is constituted by the two things the first is perception perception can be referred as the knowledge of the objects resulting from the direct contact with them and the second thing is representation representation can be referred as mental imageries of the perceived object and perception and representations are linked through language language is a basic tool which link perception and representation and helps us in learning and understanding or in looking at the world in the way we look at it now perception is very important as perception is the basis for representation and the theorist adelbert ms 
Zarfar in 1938 highlighted about perception that perception comes from us and not from the object around us. Therefore, it causes differences in how we look at the world around us. Perception is something which is there within us, not out of us, and it therefore it is subjective, not objective. The second thing which Zarfar proposed about perception is perception is a function of our previous experiences, assumptions, and our purposes or needs. It can be said that our purposes or needs or previous experiences refer to how we look at the world. The third thing which Zarfar proposed about the perception is perceptions are relatively stable till it causes dysfunctionality. Until and unless we are having problems with our perception in solving the day to day problem, we carry on with our previous perceptions. We are not going to change them. But as the dysfunctionality comes, we try to change our perception and look at the world in different manners. For example, a child who perceives that his or her mother is making a single roti or a chapati with two balls of dough will take the single chapati as two. However, when it comes to the combination of or joining the two fix the solid balls, his perception will come at the question and he is required to change his or her perception. The fourth thing which Zarfar proposed about perception is Communication is possible only to the extent the two people perceive similar purpose, assumption and experiences. If two people look at the things in different way and have different assumptions about the thing, their communications need to be or it is essentially to be debarred. Now, what are the foundations of Piagetian theory of cognitive development? While proposing his theory, Piaget assumed that cognitive development like biological system construct the structures it need to function and those structures are called schema or schemata in singular it is schemata and in plural it is schema or schemes cognitive development is also caused through interaction between the individual and the environment it is not an isolated thing the individual needs to interact with his physical and social environment to have cognitive development or to attain maturity in cognitive development. Cognitive development is also influenced by physical and social environment, maturation and equilibration. Equilibration is a basic process proposed by Jean Piaget. Now coming on the assumptions of the theory proposed by Jean Piaget. The first assumption of the theory is children are active and motivated learners. Children has been seen as eager learners who are very eager to explore. The second assumption of the theory is children construct knowledge from their own experiences. We can understand this thing that children explore the world around them and try to learn the things differently. They structure, they systemize their learning by exploration they made. The third assumption about the theory is the knowledge acquired is organized into schemes or the structures or the schemata or the schema subject to change as experiences change. So our cognitive development essentially is dependent upon the experiences we are gaining by exploring our physical and social world. Now there are assumptions about the basic processes through which cognitive development take place. Children invariably learn through two basic processes. The first process is the process of assimilation. Look at the visual. Assimilation can be referred as the dealing with a new event in consistency with the existing scheme. For example, a child has a construct of animal in his or her mind and now he or she sees another animal and club it into the same category of animal a creature with four legs, a tail, two ear, two eyes or walking on his or her four legs will be included in the scheme of animal. However, when the things come in an outer environment which are not in uh, connoissance with the existing schemes, children are required to change their scheme or add 
the new schemes into their uh, mental structure and the adding of the new scheme into the mental structure is called the process of accommodation. Therefore, accommodation can be referred as dealing with the new event which is inconsistent with the existing schemes and hence modification or creation of a new schema resulted. The next assumption of the theory is cognitive development is dependent upon the interaction with one's social and physical environment. There are examples when a children who has been put in different social and physical environment, their cognitive development has a limitation. Therefore, the interaction or enhancement of the interaction of the children with their social and physical environment is very very important to attain or to move through into the stages of cognitive development proposed by Jean Piaget. The process of equilibration that is from equilibrium to disequilibrium and back to equilibrium promotes progressions towards increasingly complex thought. Whenever we encounter with a new situation in our life, we fall in the situation of disequilibrium and all of us whether we are children or adults we aspire to attain equilibrium in our life and therefore we try to gain through new experiences and add new learning into our experiences to deal with our life and it uh, progresses us or it promotes us into our cognitive domain and it promotes our cognitive development. Now coming on the stages proposed by Jean Piaget of cognitive development, he has proposed four stages. The first stage is sensory motor stage which is around 0 to 2 years of life that is for a newborn baby till he or she attains 2 years of his or her life. The second stage is pre-operational stage which falls through 2 years of life to 7 to 8 years of life. Then there is concrete operational stage which spans through 7 to 11 or 12 years of life. Then the last stage or the fourth stage proposed by Jean Piaget is formal operational stage which spans through 11 to 12 years and onwards. It is not closing stage. It indicates that the cognitive development happens as we uh, progress or as our experiences enriches through time. Uh, the unique thing about these stages is these stages spins through the chronological age which indicates that if a normal child is placed within a specific category of age then that age implies there are certain things which that child is able to perform cognitively. Now elaborating each stage differently. The first stage is sensory motor stage which spin through 0 to 2 years of life. It is symbolized as pre-verbal or pre-symbolic period as language or the meaningful language is absent in this period. It is also characterized by direct sensorial and motor action that is sucking, looking, grasping etc. Time and again I am telling you that cognitive development is an outcome of interaction of children with their physical and social environment and in first stage that is in sensory motor stage this interaction takes place through senses and through the motor activities or by using his or her body by the child. Therefore, this stage is characterized by direct sensorial and motor actions that is sucking, looking, grasping, etc. This stage also proceeds from uncoordinated to coordinated interaction with the environment. The child starts with haphazard and uncoordinated interactions with the environment or random interactions with the environment which converts into purposeful and coordinated interactions with the environment as we move towards the later stages of this particular stage. In sensory motor stage, there is a gradual conversion of reflexes in acquired habits and to intelligent activities. For example, there are reflexes of blinking, there are reflexes of crying, there are reflexes of moving hands or uh, legs or the body or shaking the uh, neck, but these reflexes 
later on in the stage converts into habits and intelligent activities defined by a purpose into it for example a child learns to use his head to say no or yes in the later stages of his life in this stage then the sensory motor stage is also characterized by establishing objectives in intentions of the children actions the child enables in setting objectives for his or her actions in this particular stage as it grows up and the uniqueness of his stage is in attaining the concept of object permanence and the basic understanding of causality time and space object permanence is a phenomena where a child learns that the object is there or the object is present even if it is not in front of his or her eyes that is it exists whether he or she is able to look at it or not for example if we hide some toy from the child the child knows that the toy exists and he tries to explore it or to find that toy back or he or she ask for that particular toy and the child in this stage is also able to understand the causality that is he or she is able to uh, establish the relationship between cause and effect what is causing what he is able to understand and also the time and space coming on the next stage the second stage which is termed as pre operational stage which spans through 2 years of life to 7 to 8 years of life this pre operational stage is very important as it coincide with preschool stage that is early childhood care and education stage this stage also symbolizes the symbolic representation the growth of symbolic representation through language symbolic play and deferred imitations symbolic representation and the presence of language starts here the child is able to use language meaningfully linguistic symbols meaningfully and it is indulged in a uh, symbolic play that is something symbolizes something else and the deferred imitations are also identified with this stage for example a child learns something at one point of time but reacts or uses that learning at some other point of time for example many of us have observed that something is said or done at one point of time which a child learn and it imitates uh, it at a different point of time or it exhibit or he or she is exhibit it at some different point of time the pre operational stage is however divide of conservation and reversible operational thinking conservation is a concept in which a child is able to understand that if a thing or an object or a liquid changes its forms and shapes it is same in the quantity however a child in a pre operational stage is not able to understand that if a thing or object change it forms or shape it remains intact he or she understand or look at it that the quantity gets changed or the as the shape or the form gets changed he is not able to understand the phenomena even if you reverse the whole process and make him understand that the quantity is same in spite of changing the form and shape he continues to believe that the quantity has changed even if the uh, size and the shape or the shape or the form is back therefore the pre operational stage is understood as devoid of conservation and reversibility reversible operational thinking and to have its unique identification egocentrism is the main characteristic of pre operational stage that is in pre operational stage while playing or thinking the feeling of i is most important for the child all of his world or her world is centered around himself or herself coming on the third stage that is concrete operational stage which spans through 7 to 11 or 12 years of life this stage coincide with elementary school stage and therefore it is of special concern for us 
This stage is also identified with logical and systematic thinking that is a child start thinking in a logical and in systematic manner which can be flowed and which can be implemented on from one task to another task or to resolve one problem and the other problem of similar nature. The concrete operational stage is also symbolized with the presence of conservation and reversibility that is if a thing or object change its form and shape the child is able to disfigure that the thing or the quantity is same or intact after changing its shape and form. He or she is also able to have acquire reversibility in his or her thinking that is he or she is able to make the things in original shape after reversing the alterations made. The child is also able to solve different problems but only when the concrete representations are made. This is the stage when we introduce mathematics through concrete representation that is for example if we want to make a child learn addition either we give him a sticks different kind of sticks to add or we have lines to be sketched on his or her copy or the paper and then ask the children to add those lines after counting them. This is the stage which is symbolized by the absence of abstract thinking that if the concrete representations are not there, the children have problem in thinking or solving the problems. Now coming on the last stage which is the formal operational stage which starts from 11 to 12 years of life and goes on and on. This is the last stage where it is supposed that the cognitive maturity of the child is at peak. Therefore, a child can reason hypothetically using symbols and ideas. Sophisticated use of language starts here and the child uses language and abstract ideas to solve his day-to-day -day problems. Here, the concretization of or concrete representation is not required. The formal operational stage, a child also attains new mental structure and these mental structures include prepositional combination of symbolic logics such as implication in terms of if and then. If and then are the conditions, for example, if this happens, then what falls? The second symbolic logic is disjunction such as either or or both. Disjunctions identifies the choices in terms of either one or the all available. Then the next symbolic logic is exclusion which is either or. That is if a child is required to choose one, he or she doesn't need any kind of concrete representation of it, he or she is able to choose one on the basis of symbols and ideas which are abstract in nature and he or she can make clear choices. Now, after going through the four stages, after understanding that how children think, there are implication of the Piagetian theory of cognitive development. There are certain implication after understanding that how children think in terms of how Piaget proposed the span of cognitive development. We can say that children are active and motivated learners who are eager to explore. Cognitive development is also a function of maturity and interaction with the environment that is, it is biological in nature and also influenced by the atmosphere and environment around us. Cognitive development also requires provision of different kind of learning experiences which should broadly be placed in the understanding of what a child of specific age is capable of performing cognitively. Now, coming on the summary. In today's lesson, we have discussed that children have wide spectrum of thinking. Their cognitive development depends upon the two important elements, perception and representation. Cognitive development or thinking of children is theorized 
to be spent through four stages that are sensory motor stage which spent through zero to two years of life which is also termed as pre-verbal stage or pre-symbolic stage where the child functions primarily on the basis of reflexes and object permanence develops during this stage. The second stage is the pre-operational stage which spans through two to seven years and is characterized by the representation and symbolism but devoid of reversible thinking and concept of conservation. The third stage is termed as concrete operational stage which spans through seven years to 11 to 12 years of life and is characterized with logical and systematic thinking primarily concrete in nature and this stage lacks abstraction in thinking. The fourth stage or the formal operational stage which spent through 11 to 2 years to onwards of cognitive development is identified with growth of children's cognitive ability to reason hypothetically using abstract symbols and idea. In brief, it can be said that to make learning experiences relevant and meaningful for children, the learning should invariably be placed in how children think or in the direction of their cognitive development. Now, it's time to take home task. Taking Piagetian theory of cognitive development as reference, propose with justification some of the teaching strategies which you as a teacher would use to teach mathematics to your students in elementary classes. With this task, I would leave you to teach and learn mathematics. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much.